The opening scene features a guy who finds himself confined within a large cube, comprised of various compartments. In his quest to escape, he ventures through different compartments. At one point, he enters a room that sprays him with an unfamiliar liquid. Initially, he freaks out, thinking that it's acid. But as he tastes it, he finds out it's sweet. The man assumes that it is flavored water and desperately drinks it to quench his thirst. However, to his dismay, the liquid turns out to be a powerful chemical base that gradually melts his entire higher body within a few minutes, ultimately resulting in his death. It is then revealed that all the rooms in the cube are under constant surveillance from a remote observation room where two technicians named Eric and Dodd work. They are oblivious to the identity of their bosses and are strictly prohibited from accessing the files which are not related to their tasks. Despite this restriction, Eric is increasingly curious about the events occurring within the cube and attempts to inquire about them to Dodd. However, the latter dismisses him rudely. Based on their knowledge, Eric and Dodd are aware that everyone within the cube has either been condemned to death or is willingly choosing to participate in psychological experiments. During their work, the two technicians engage in regular chess matches where Eric demonstrates his remarkable mental calculation abilities by predicting Dodd's moves. Alongside their duties, they are provided with some tablets as their meals. One day, Eric and Dodd are tasked with a significant assignment to record and erase the memories of a subject named Cassandra Rains. In her memory, Eric witnesses Cassandra and her daughter strolling happily through a forest. However, their peace is abruptly shattered when they are abducted by a masked soldier who injects them with sedatives. Before passing out, Cassandra manages to unveil the soldier's face, revealing a distinct cube tattoo on his forehead. Later, she regains consciousness and finds herself trapped within the confines of the cube. She's in that guy's forehead somewhere. She calls for help, but as expected, no one can hear her out. Realizing that her fate is in her own hands, Cassandra finally starts exploring her surroundings. She somehow manages to reach the adjacent room, but as soon as she enters, another captive named Robert Haskell throws her to the ground. He tightly restrains her until he realizes that she is one of them. In the room, Cassandra meets three other occupants, Jellico, Meyerhold, and Bartok. They appear to have been trapped here for weeks. Surprisingly, Robert bears the same cube tattoo as the soldier who captured Cassandra, and Bartok shares a name with a cartoon bat from Anastasia. However, none of the group members possess memories of their past lives or any recollection of how they ended up here. Motivated by a shared desire to escape, they collectively decide to head in the same direction, hoping to locate an edge. As a result, the captives navigate the intricate chambers of the cube, cautiously testing each room for potential traps. At first, Bartok uses a method of throwing his shoe and waiting for signs of danger. When he doesn't see anything wrong, he assumes the room is safe and proceeds inside. Unfortunately, his assumption proves fatal, as he soon becomes trapped in a network of threads that slowly get tighter, cutting his body into pieces. The cartoon bat fared a little better. Following the terrifying incident, the remaining victims continue their search for an escape route. After a bit of discussion, they learn that each door within the cube bears English alphabets. Cassandra deduces that these alphabets actually represent coordinates, providing information about the position of each room within the cube. They speculate that the cube is comprised of a total of 26 rooms, correlating with the number of letters in the English alphabet. Acting upon this realization, the group begins investigating other rooms, discovering that the rooms along the Z-axis are deemed safe. Meanwhile, in the control room, Eric becomes curious and decides to uncover why the people are imprisoned within the cube. He then devises a proposition, offering to teach Dodd various chess strategies in exchange for information concerning the cube. Dodd, who is intrigued by the offer, shares details about the cube's third auxiliary unit, but refrains from divulging any further specifics. In the next scene, Eric's curiosity intensifies when he he notices that Cassandra's consent form is missing. He quickly informs Dodd, saying that whatever they are doing is illegal, but Dodd once again dismisses him. Their attention is then caught by Cassandra's photograph in a newspaper, revealing her to be a politician. This revelation leads Eric to realize that the cube not only targets criminals, but also innocent individuals without their consent. Shortly after, Eric and Dodd receive a call from their superiors, issuing a directive to carry out an exit procedure. It is revealed that the procedure involves their former colleague, Owen, who currently serves
serves as a test subject within the cube. For this purpose, Dodd prepares a machine equipped with a camera and a yes-no button. As Owen approaches one of the cube's exits, he becomes trapped by thick chains. In this critical moment, Dodd poses several questions to Owen, inquiring about his name and his belief in God. Despite hearing Dodd's voice, Owen fails to recognize him, indicating that his memory has also been erased. He answers correctly to the first question, prompting Dodd to press the yes button. However, when confronted with the second question, Owen denies his belief in God, leading him to press the no button. As soon as he does so, a fire engulfs him, killing him instantly. Witnessing all this, Eric begins to panic, realizing that they too could meet a similar fate at any given moment. He reaches the disturbing conclusion that the cube's existence is inhumane and people are being forcibly placed inside against their will. A few hours later, Eric becomes so paranoid that he decides to venture into the cube himself. He now wants to save the remaining victims from their impending doom. For this, he enters the unauthorized elevator, which takes him all the way down to the cube. Then, using his extensive knowledge of the place, Eric draws a map and memorizes it well before embarking on his mission to join Cassandra and the rest of the group. Meanwhile, a superior named Jax, accompanied by his associates, arrives at the control room. They are aware of Eric's entry into the cube, so they utilize controlling machines to track his whereabouts. Amidst all this, Jax orders Dodd to initiate a standard series of needle tests on Cassandra and the rest of the group. Elsewhere, inside the cube, Jellico takes the initiative to investigate a room. She doesn't want to do it, but she has no other choice. Unfortunately, the decision turns out to be a bad one. As soon as she enters, the door behind her abruptly shuts. Cassandra hurriedly opens the door, but to her shock, Jellico has already vanished. This unsettling incident reveals that the rooms inside the cube are in constant motion. Meanwhile, as Jellico explores her room, Dodd locates her and administers a sedative injection to her feet, rendering her unconscious. After searching for several hours, Cassandra and the group finally find Jellico lying motionless. Meyerhold carefully approaches her and turns her over, only to discover that her body has been afflicted by some sort of infection. Just then, Jellico wakes up and clutches onto Meyerhold, pleading for help. However, in a defensive act, Meyerhold pushes her away, accidentally causing her to strike her head against the wall. This results in her death, but Meyerhold soon realizes that his hands had been scratched while she was clutching onto him. Unfortunately, before he can react, the infection starts spreading across his body as well. Recognizing the potential danger he poses, Robert suggests that they leave Meyerhold behind. He claims that the guy is only going to slow them down, or worse, infect them as well. However, despite all of this, Cassandra asserts that they cannot abandon the poor man. When Meyerhold also starts pleading, Robert agrees, but on the condition that he inspects all subsequent rooms before the group enters. With no other viable option, Meyerhold reluctantly agrees, and the group continues their journey. In the next scene, Meyerhold proceeds to check a room located beneath them, but Robert suddenly pushes him downward. The room turns out to be a trapped one that emits an incredible high-frequency sound. This sadly kills Meyerhold in seconds. As expected, Cassandra expresses her disappointment and engages in a heated argument with Robert. She calls him a betrayer who only cares about himself. Just as things are about to turn violent, Eric enters the room and asserts that what Robert did was right because the virus was highly infectious. Plus, it wasn't even that loud. They just played some Imagine Dragons and he keeled over. Eric then introduces himself as an employee and proceeds to divulge secret information about the cubes. He explains that the occupants volunteered for this experience, despite having no recollection of it. However, Robert angrily claims that he never signed any consent form and committed no crime. He mentions that he used to be a hard-working delivery boy before he was abducted, but in reality, Robert has no recollection of his past life. Meanwhile, Cassandra inquires about her daughter, prompting Robert to share some sketches he made. He claims that he saw the girl in her memory Overwhelmed, Cassandra loses control and attacks him, but Robert stops her, reminding her that they need the man. Eric also assures them that he is here to help as he can analyze the coordinates and guide them towards the third auxiliary exit. On the other hand, Jax's associates locate Eric's whereabouts and display the information on their monitor. In response, Jax orders them to erase all coordinates of the room and surround the occupants with traps. After successfully confining them within one room, Jax activates the electrification of the walls to potentially kill 
them. However, a sudden power outage disrupts their connection with the cube. Turns out, Dodd had a sudden change of heart, and he was the one who sabotaged the operation. This action deactivates all the traps within the room and initiates a reset mode. The prisoners are now granted a 10 minute window to escape before a sterilization procedure begins and vaporizes everything inside. Eric quickly realizes that Dodd has assisted them, so he sets a 10 minute countdown timer on his watch and leads the group to the exit. In the control room, Jax eventually learns of Dodd's treachery and, well, he kills him as punishment. After this, he accesses an implanted chip within Robert's brain, granting him control over his body. Jax then manipulates the programming and orders Robert to eliminate the others before they can successfully exit the cube. Following the order, Robert becomes hostile towards his former companions and launches a brutal attack on them. However, Eric and Cassandra team up and somehow manage to subdue him. The two then head forward and eventually arrive at an exit room, only to discover Robert waiting for them. He once again attacks the duo and almost manages to choke Eric to death. But fortunately, Cassandra comes to the rescue and impales him with a sharp metal object, finally killing him. You just got cubed, she says. The two then hastily enter the auxiliary exit just before the sterilization procedure commences. Following this, Eric and Cassandra swim through water and emerge in a lake. They make their escape through a forest that eerily resembles the one depicted in Cassandra's memory earlier. Unfortunately, Jack's soldiers also arrive at the forest and start chasing them. During the pursuit, Eric is sadly tranquilized and captured, but before losing consciousness, he manages to hold the soldiers back momentarily, allowing Cassandra to escape. Later on, Eric regains consciousness and finds himself in a surgical room, where Jax reveals that Eric has been convicted of high treason and that he had agreed to participate as a test subject. Jax also presents a consent form with Eric's signature, although the latter has no recollection of it. Following this revelation, a surgeon proceeds to alter Eric's brain. During this, he dreams of Cassandra reuniting with her daughter and praising him as a superhero. A superhero with the same IQ as the Green Lantern. In the final scene, Eric, who is now mentally disabled, is held back inside the cube, where he is found by the new captives. He repeatedly mentions the color of the room and expresses his desire to return to a room with a different color. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.